Hello lovelies, in this video we're going to be looking at atom economy for your A level chemistry. Now this might be something you came across at GCSE or it might be a completely new topic for you. So we're going to go through the meaning of it, we're going to go through some calculations and then we're going to go through the ways that you can change and improve atom economy if we're looking at green chemistry. Atom economy is really interesting and with this topic we can bring in lots of different areas of chemistry. In a reaction we have our reactants and they turn into our products. For example, if we're looking at the reaction between A, the bit in pink, and B, the bit in green, and they turn into our products C and D, the reactants A and B contain all of the atoms that we've put into this reaction. But what we actually want out of it is C. This is the desired product or the required product, depending on the exact wording that your textbook or your teacher uses. They both mean the same thing. It's the bit that you actually want. The atom economy is how many of the atoms in the reactants, how many atoms that we put in at the start, end up in the product that you want, that end up in your desired or your required product. And we are looking at the MR of the atoms, not just the number of the atoms, but the mass of the atoms. The equation that we have for this is the percentage atom economy is the total or the sum MR of the required products over the sum MR, the total mass of all of the products. You might see this written slightly differently in different textbooks, or your teacher might have given it to you slightly differently, but it is the mass of the required products over the sum mass of the reactants. If your equation is balanced, the total sum mass of all the reactants should be equal to the total sum mass of all the products. This is a really useful thing that we can do to check our equations, to check that we haven't missed anything or balanced our equations incorrectly. Because the mass of all the reactants will equal the mass of products, we're not losing or gaining anything in a reaction. Everything is conserved. Atom economy can sometimes be confused with percentage yield because they are often taught at the same time. Lots of questions combine them as a joint question and the equations do look pretty similar, but these are different things. They are subtly different. The equations and the explanations sometimes look very similar and get confused, but they are different. You need to be aware of that. Percentage yield is how much you think you will actually get compared to how much you get at the end of a reaction. The equation is percentage yield is actual yield divided by theoretical yield, so how much you actually get divided by how much you think you'll get times 100. And the reasons why you might go, not get 100% yield are different to the reasons you might not get 100% atom economy. When we are calculating atom economy, it is percentage atom economy, and we need the sum of the mass of the required products divided by the sum of the mass of all of the products all of the reactants, depending on how you've written this down, times 100. Here is an example question. Hydrochloric acid is added to a sample of lithium carbonate. A solution of lithium chloride is produced. Calculate the atom economy of this with respect to lithium chloride. So we have hydrochloric acid being added to lithium carbonate. At A level, I would expect students to be able to read a question and from that come up with the balanced equation. Hydrochloric acid, hopefully you know that is HCl. You should know the formula of a carbonate ion, CO3, 2 minus. And because it's a minus 2 ion, lithium is a plus 1 ion. Putting those together to overall get a neutral ion. Lithium carbonate is Li2CO3. This is a carbonate plus an acid. So our products are going to be a salt, carbon dioxide and water. And nicely, they've already told us what the salt here is, lithium chloride. Lithium is a plus one, chloride is a minus one, so LiCl. And then we have carbon dioxide, CO2 and water, H2O. Now we need to balance this. The obvious place to start is with the lithiums because we know lithium carbonate is Li2, so we need to put two on there. And then we double the number of chlorine, so we need to go back to the left-hand side and put two in front of the hydrochloric acid. And then after that, everything is balanced. When we're working out the atom economy, the first thing we do is work out the mass of everything. So hydrogen has a mass of one, chlorine has a mass of 35.5. If we add those together, we get the mass of hydrochloric acid at 36.5, and we have two of these in the equation, so we need to times that by two 
giving us a total mass for all of the hydrochloric acid that is involved in this reaction as 73. Lithium carbonate. Lithium has a mass of 7 and there are 2 of them in lithium carbonates. That gives us a total of 14. Carbon has a mass of 12. Oxygen has a mass of 16 and there are 3 of those. So we need to do 16 times 3 which gives us 48. To get the mass of lithium carbonate we need to add all of those together. So 14 plus 12 plus 48 which gives us 74. Now we can move over to the right hand side of the equation. Lithium is 7 plus chlorine which is 35.5. Add those two together and we get 42.5. We have two lithium chlorides so we need to times that by 2 giving us 85. Now I will confess that I know off the top of my head the mass of carbon dioxide and water because I do these sort of things so often you might get to that point as well but in the exam it is always worth writing things out. So carbon has a mass of 12, oxygen has a mass of 16 times 2, 16 times 2 is 34 plus 12 gives us 44. Hydrogen has a mass of 1, there are 2 of them so 1 times 2 is 2 plus 16 gives us 18. Now we can internally check our answers here because the mass on the left hand side of the equation should equal the mass on the right hand side of the equation. So I'm going to do this step, it is not necessary but it is important. So 73 plus 74 gives us 147. 85 plus 44 plus 18 also gives us 147. So we know we've added up all of the masses correctly and we know we've balanced our equation correctly. This is an internal self-check you can do really quickly in the exam to check you've got the right answer and to check you haven't made a mistake up to this point. The mass of our required product is 85. The mass of all the products is 147. So we're going to do 85 divided by 147. And if this is part of a longer answer, if you're going to be using this number later on, then please keep the number in your calculator, in your calculator memory. Do not round it at this point. We can then take this number, this decimal, we need to times it by 100 because we are looking for a percentage, which will give us 57.8 as the percentage at an economy for this reaction. We can compare the atom economy between two different equations. If we look at the production of ethanol, there are two different ways to do it by fermentation or by hydration. Producing ethanol from fermentation comes from a sugar cane, so we need glucose, C6H12O6, which will go to ethanol. And this is fermentation done by yeast, so ethanol isn't the only product. We will also get carbon dioxide out at the end. We need to balance that. We get two ethanols and two carbon dioxides out. If we look at the equation for hydration, and you should be familiar with both of these equations separately. For hydration, we have ethene, which is reacted with steam, reacted with water in the equation, and that gives us ethanol. Producing ethanol by hydration has 100% atom economy, since all of the reactants are in the final product. For fermentation, we do need to do the mass. So mass of carbon is 12 and we have 6 of those. The mass of hydrogen is 1 and we have 12 of those. The mass of oxygen is 16 and we have 6 of those. So 12 times 6 gives us 72. 1 times 12 gives us 12. And then 16 times 6 gives us 96. If we add 72 plus 12 plus 96, we will get the total mass of all of the one reactant that we have on the left hand side it gives us 180. On the right hand side, just doing it in different colours so we don't get confused with the numbers on the left hand side, carbon is 12 and there's two of those, hydrogen is one and there's five of those, then we have oxygen at 16 and another hydrogen at one. 12 times 2 is 24, plus 1 times 5 is 5, plus 16 plus 1 gives us 46. There are two ethanols produced, so that's 46 times 2, that gives us 92. Doing our internal check, we have carbon dioxide at 44, that was on the last slide. 44 times 2 plus 92 gives us 180, so we've done everything correctly. Correctly balanced the equation, correctly worked out the mass. The mass of the required products is 92, the mass of the total products is 180, so 192 divided by 180 gives us a percentage atom economy of 51.1%. So from the looks of it, from the atom economy side of this, fermentation has a lower atom economy, so is it the worst equation for this? Unfortunately, it's not as simple as that. When we are deciding which equation to use to do something, when we are deciding which is the 
best equation if there is something. We need to take lots of things into account. So we need to look at the source of the reactants. Hydration has a better atom economy, but the source of the reactants is crude oil. That is where ethene comes from. And this is a finite resource, so it might not be very good for this. Also, hydration has a very high energy usage, whereas fermentation is a very low energy usage. It's done at a lower temperature. It's a very low tech way to produce ethanol, which makes it more accessible to a range of communities. We can improve the atom economy of a reaction to make it more sustainable. You might see this referred to as sustainable chemistry or green chemistry. As we saw on the last slide, you can change the reaction to improve the atom economy. If it's a multi-step process, you might want to look at removing the number of steps, changing a couple of the steps so that there are less steps, so less is lost. If we are looking at the waste products, you can find a use for the waste products. The waste product in the production of ethanol from sugarcane was carbon dioxide. If you could actually harness that carbon dioxide and use it for something, then it wouldn't be a waste product and you would have improved the atom economy of the equation. An equation might have more than one useful product, which is why I've written down the sum of the MR of the required useful desired products instead of just the single one, because there might be two products that are useful. Ouch! This is why in some videos I have unexplained scratches. Thank you.